If you read in Luke 21, chapter 25 and 26, um, speaking of the, the coming of the Son of Man, uh, it's, this is Jesus talking, and it says, And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then in Matthew 24, 12, speaking of the same distress, it's a parallel um, passage to, to the passage in Luke. It says this, and, and because iniquity will abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many shall wax cold. Now listen, I know many times we people quote these verses and pull these verses out trying to figure out when the end times are, right? They, they, they look at the distress in the earth and then they read these passages and they're, they're trying to pinpoint whether we're in the end times or not. I know there's lots of people that read these ver passages that also try to pinpoint the end times, but they use them to try to pinpoint that the end times have, have already passed. Listen, what I, what I want to say to you, if you're reading those verses trying to interpret when the end times will happen or if they have happened already, you're missing the point, right? And so we have, we have some people that aren't enjoying the first fruits of the Spirit now, that aren't seeing that, that Christ has conquered death and that death has been abolished. They're not seeing that now, and they're, or they're not looking at that now, so they're all the time wanting Jesus to return because they think they can't be filled with the fruit of the Spirit till Jesus comes back. So they're all the time consumed with looking in the Scriptures, trying to find when Jesus will return, because they think they have to wait till then to enjoy God. Well, you can enjoy the fullness of God now, right? And we have a certainty that in the future that the Spirit we have now that can produce the fruit of God's life in us now, we have a certainty that on the last day that same Spirit will glorify our mortal flesh with immortality. We have a certainty of that. And when we see that, that will actually serve us with peace now. And then we have the, the group of people, God bless them, they're all well-intentioned. They look at these guys that are like, well, one day in the sweet by and by that are stuck there. And they say something's wrong with that. And they're right about saying something's wrong with that. But now they think the answer is to come and prove that the end times are already over. And so they want to quote these verses to try to convince people that the last day has already happened. And so listen, whether you're of the, the group that wants to use those verses to try to figure out when it is and when it's going to happen... Listen, if you're of that group, and you're, you're, you're one side of the coin, but if you're of the other group that's trying to say it already happened because you think that's the power under people walking in the life of God, neither one of those groups is looking at the glorified man Jesus seated at the right hand of God. Right? And it's the same side. It's a, the, the different side of the same coin is what it is. That's not my motivation for, for bringing up those verses. Um, and if that's your motivation when you're reading those verses is trying to teach when the end times was, what I want to say is you're missing the point. That's what I want to say, you're missing the point. But I don't want to despise where, where some people are be, because I'm, I'm not there. So for anyone who's concerned, with, uh, concerned about the last days and when they are, for anyone who's concerned about that, listen, I want to tell you what you need to know about that. Okay? And hopefully you'll close the book about it. And that doesn't mean you, you'll never think about the event, but you'll stop laboring to try to understand. I see people laboring to try to pinpoint when the last days are is because they think they have to be prepared, right? <laughs> and they think the way to be prepared is to figure out when it will be. <laughs> and so you can read the signs, and that's how you'll know, and then you'll be prepared, right? That's not how you're going to be prepared, right? You'll be prepared by having the Holy Spirit, <laughs> Right? And let me tell you, the way you're going to have the Holy Spirit is the same way 1 John says, where he talks about you believe on the testimony God's given in Jesus. Which testimony is that eternal life is found in His Son, in believing on His Son. And when you believe on the testimony that God has given you eternal life free from your works, and that eternal life is in Jesus Christ, and what God has done in Him to overcome death in the flesh, what happens is, is John says that anointing abides in you. 
That anointing is the Holy Spirit. And the only way to be prepared and the only preparation that is needed, it isn't for your physical eyes and your carnal eyes to need to be able to look up in the sky or look at the calamity in the earth and figure out if this is the right time. And now you're going to run out to the mountainside and you're going to be ready. That's not how you're going to be ready, man. The Holy Spirit's going to catch you up on that day. Right? And so if if you're worried about when the last days are, when the end times are, listen, let me just tell you, it's been the last days since the Lord Jesus Christ ascended on high and sat down at the right hand of the Father, having received in His body the very glory and immortality of God, and having poured out of Himself the Spirit of God onto all flesh. It has been the end times in the last days ever since that moment. It was then... And it is now. The last days, the end times, are the days leading up to the day when there's no more sin and death anywhere in creation. It's the end of the age where sin and death got it right to be in creation. That's what it is. It's the end of the age of death. It's the end of the age of sin. It's the end of the day where there's injustice that exists. That's what it is. And so we could say it's the last days of the existence of death in the earth. And so if you want to think about the end times and the last days, the thing your mind is so filled with isn't how are we going to figure out when it is? Or how are we going to figure out if it already was? Because the thing you're supposed to think about is that death will be removed completely. The whole purpose of John writing the book of Revelation was to encourage the people who were suffering great tribulation and the way he encouraged them was by pointing to the certainty they had that death would be removed from creation. And so, when you think of the end times in the last days, if your mind is filled with the destruction of the temple in 70 AD, you're missing it. Because I promise you, death wasn't removed from the earth. And your mind isn't filled with the removal of death. It's filled with the destruction of a physical temple. And if you're busy thinking that you've got to figure out when the last days are so you can be prepared, listen, you're missing it. Because the whole point is for your imagination to be filled with that death is on death row. And that death is perishing. It's actively perishing. Just as we could say the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is covering the earth, what we could say is the knowing or the seeing of death is actively perishing in the earth. And that's what you want your mind to be filled with. So it's the end of the time where death can be seen in creation. And so if you still see death in creation, then the end times haven't already finished. And the last day hasn't already happened. Neither has the coming of our Lord Jesus happened. Right? He come the first time to deal with sin. He's coming the second time to set up his government in a physical earth. Right? And so that's what you're supposed to think of when you think of the the end times. You're supposed to think of the government that's upon his shoulders. You're supposed to think about how he reigns through the power of an indestructible life. You're supposed to think about the certainty you have that that indestructible life is reigning over you and will reign in this earth. Right? Because what will happen then is your mind will be filled with God and the life of God. And your mind, you won't stand in awe of the death or the calamity in this earth. You won't stand in awe of the distress that's in this earth. But rather, you are stand in awe of the life of God. Right? Hallelujah for that. 